Sam Giancana was a notorious American mobster who rose to prominence during the mid-20th century. He was known for his involvement in organized crime, including his leadership of the Chicago outfit and his alleged connections to the CIA. Blood Letters and Bad Men will delve into the life and criminal career of one of the most colorful and notorious mobsters of all time. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Sam Giancana was born Salvatore Giancana on June 15, 1908 in Chicago, Illinois. He was a son of Sicilian immigrants and grew up in the Chicago suburb of Oak Park. As a young man, Giancana became involved in the Chicago Outfit, a criminal organization headed by Johnny Torrio and Alfonso Capone, and one that controlled much of the illegal activity in the city, including gambling, prostitution, and bootlegging. Carl Sathakis notes, He was a snarling, sarcastic, ill-tempered, sadistic psychopath. That was a young Sam Momo Giancana, a man who would become for a time the most powerful mafia boss west of the Mississippi. Giancana began his criminal career as a low-level enforcer for the Chicago outfit in the 1930s. In fact, he began as a wheelman for the Capone gang. He quickly rose to the ranks and became a key member of the organization's leadership by the 1950s. During this time, Giancana was involved in a variety of criminal activities, including extortion, racketeering, and murder. According to the Mob Museum, in 1926, Giancana was arrested and charged with murder, but inconveniently for the prosecution, a key witness died violently, and the charges were dropped. He served jail or prison time for several offenses, including operating an illegal still, car theft, and burglary. Several biographers say he was arrested more than 70 times for various offenses. J. Robert Nash explains, when Selective Service officials interviewed Giancana for potential overseas duty in World War II, they asked him about his profession. The candy mobster replied, me? I steal. The draft board declared Giancana 4F and sent him home. Despite his criminal activities, Giancana was a charismatic and charming figure who was popular with many people, including members of the entertainment industry. His circle of friends included Frank Sinatra, Marilyn Monroe, Joe E. Lewis, Phyllis McGuire, and Keely Smith. He was also involved in a love triangle with a woman named Judith Campbell Exner. Exner was a woman who claimed to have had, at the same time, a romantic relationship with Giancana and also President John F. Kennedy. Again, citing Carl Syphakis. In the early 1950s, Giancana had masterminded the move to take over from the Black Numbers Kings. A few dishes murders in the field and the income of the Chicago outfit grew by millions of dollars a year. By the mid-1950s, he was promoted to a position in the Chicago outfit that dealt with the day-to-day -day operations. By the early 1950s, he was appointed as head of the outfit but by most accounts, he was the front man for the gang, the real power being welded by Tony Accardo. Many of the old-timers had retired. Paul Rica seemed to like him and stood by his choice, even when the going got tough. He was the outfit's representative to the National Summit of Mob Bosses held in Appalachian, New York in that same year. Giancana's involvement with organized crime was not limited to the United States. Giancana had connections to criminal organizations in Cuba and Italy, as well as the CIA. He was allegedly involved in the CIA's efforts to assassinate Cuban leader Fidel Castro in the early 1960s. 
and there are even rumors that he played a role in the assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963. It is worth noting that some of the information about Giancana's life and criminal activities remains disputed and shouted in rumors and speculation. This is especially true when it comes to Giancana's alleged connections to the CIA and his possible involvement in the assassination of President Kennedy. Some researchers and experts have dismissed these claims as baseless, while others continue to investigate and analyze the evidence. Therefore, it is important to approach any discussion of Giancana's life and career with a critical and objective perspective, separating fact from fiction as much as possible. Giancana's criminal career came to an end pretty much in the mid-1960s, when he was targeted by law enforcement. According to Syphakis' Mafia Encyclopedia, Giancana was forced to flee the United States in 1965 after being indicted on charges of racketeering and conspiracy. He spent several years living in Mexico before being deported back to the United States in 1974. He returned home and was subpoenaed to appear before a federal grand jury and given immunity. But many in the outfit were afraid of how he might answer the questions posed to him. After Giancana's return to the United States, police had officers guard his Oak Hill Park, Illinois home, but they failed. Again signing Robert J. Nash. On June 19, 1975, Giancana was shot seven times at close range as he stood at a stove making a plate of sausages in the basement of his Oak Park bungalow. All of this happened right before he was scheduled to appear before the church committee, which was investigating the CIA and mom's involvement in working together on numerous controversial projects. Around 11 p.m., Joseph DiPerso, Giancana's caretaker, found his body on the floor of the basement kitchen. He's interred next to his wife, Angeline, in a family mausoleum at Mount Carmel Cemetery in Hillside, Illinois. Overall, Sam Giancana remains a fascinating and controversial figure in American criminal history. His life and career continue to captivate researchers, writers, and enthusiasts who seek to uncover the truth behind his actions and his motivations.